back creations today I'm gonna make Voldemort's wand and I'm gonna make it out of polymer clay as always and yes whoops I'm wearing a sweater cuz you know sometimes summer isn't as hot as we are hoping for but anyways let's get started so the first thing I did I just cut out a metal piece from a barbecue skewer like I've done previously so if you haven't seen any of my other wand tutorials I have them in the description box below but I cut out a piece that is 35 centimeters. The reason I'm doing this is because the total length of Voldemort's wand is 36. And I just wanted a little space on each end of the rod so that I can hide it on the inside of the wand so it won't be visible in the end. So now I have this piece and now I'm just going to roll out a thin piece of clay like I usually do. And I'm just gonna cover the entire wand in a thin layer and then I'm gonna bake it and then I'm gonna start building up the ends of the bottom which are much more detailed. So as you can see, the wand is out of the oven now. I just focused mainly on this area of the wand because now I'm going to continue working on this part here, adding more clay. So what I did after it was finished and cooled down, I just used a little bit of 180 sandpaper and just roughly buffed it a little bit just to give it a little bit more of a coarse grid just to make it match the texture of the wand because there is a little bit of texture on this area of the wand, more like different like colorations but anyways now I'm just gonna start adding on clay from roughly this point so a little below half point of the length or roughly halfway so I rolled out a piece of clay and I'm just gonna add that around here roughly and I'm just gonna take off the ends on each side because it goes a little bit downwards at the beginning it's hard to explain the shape, but hopefully you guys can see it eventually what I want, want it to look like. So once I added on a thin layer of clay here, I'm just gonna blend it a little bit into the layer I had from before. And it's just to smooth out the transition and make it a nice bridge. This part here is going to be the part where it begins to have a lot of dots and crevices on the wand. So a lot of the texture here is going to be mainly that. So now I've just blended it a little bit in. I might blend a little bit more. I just have to see as I go. And a lot of the details here is just going to be made by a ball tool. And I'm just going to roll it into sort of lines and circles like this all over the area here. But I'm going to do most of these later on after I worked a little bit more on where it goes to be a thicker part where it looks like a bone. But this is just the general technique for this area and some of these I'm just gonna go into into nothing in a way if you if you understand. So I'm just doing that now and I actually might use my Dremel tool after I baked it as well just to make it even deeper in some areas, but that is completely optional. It's just really a preference. So this area here, after I added the thin layer of clay here, I just rolled out pieces of clay and started adding them on like, like this. It's just easier for the thickness and everything to just see as you go along if you want it thicker or thinner or anything. So I'm just adding on layer, working myself downwards to the end and sort of pushing out the shape that I want. It's going to be a little bit thicker here, then go in a little bit thin, and then eventually it's going to go out into the sort of hook looking bone thing at the end. So I'm just going to add a lot of clay, and but I am not going to add this piece until I baked it one more time, because then I can hold on to this while I sculpt the last part. 
So I'm just gonna go in and add it and just smooth it out into the end like this. Work on this part, then bake it, and then add the last part after that. So what I did, I just added the blobs and dots and circles to this area here by just squeezing in a ball tool, one that is a little bit smaller than this one, this size, and just wiggling it about, then dragging my finger over, and additionally, in the end, just using a flat tool like this blade, and just dragging over just to make it look neat. So that is what I've been doing with the texture. Additionally, I've been making some lines in the same way and going downwards here I made some more lines going all the way into this area that goes outwards here And it's pretty much the same thing. You're just going to vary between dots and lines and The same goes for the top in this area. I just like I said earlier just making lines and dots going into nothing so back here again it is a little bit awkward to see on camera, but I really tried to get the shape I saw at some reference pictures. And it's a little sort of hook and it goes into this semi-circle, almost like an ellipse. Because it's a little bit flat here. It's wide, but it's flat. So as you can see, it's more narrow here than what it is right here. So really just try to work on that shape. It is a little bit difficult and I spent quite some time getting, like getting the hang of it. And really now just finishing it off before the oven. I'm just making some deep lines into the area right here. And after that, and once I'm happy with how the texture is looking, I'm just going to place it in the oven for 30 minutes at 110 Celsius like I did the first time, and then I'm going to add the bottom layer after that. So the one is right here cooling down after the oven. So I just started making a sort of long elongated heart and just add a little hook on the side of the bigger part, the one that is a little bit taller than the other one. And I'm just going to work a little bit with this design right here. And then I'm going to add it on to the one before I continue with the rest of the really tiny details. So what I'm doing now is just measuring out where I want this to be with the wand. I'm just going to make some small cuts to fit it into the wand. And you can see it's pretty far up because I don't want the total length to be longer than 36 centimeters. So now I'm just cutting that, uh, taking that off and cutting into the clay. I'm just going to remove a little bit in the middle. Then I'm going to just flatten out the rest on the bottom here and just wrap that around the wand. So I've pretty much gotten it on and as you can see there isn't much detail left, it's just to figure out the size I wanted before I attached it. So now I'm just going to smooth out all the transitions from this to this area before I'm going to start sculpting the details back on again. So I'm finished blending this one into the previous part and as you can see there's no transition seams because the clay blends really well into the baked clay. So I've just added a little bit of a bump here that goes into that bow area right here, a little arch for the little beak looking part of the bone. So now I'm just going to go in and add the details again and as I said on this side it's a little bit towards the back, a little indent. It's pretty harsh and it's pretty deep. So I'm just going to work on that 
and just make sure I don't squish the back side while I do it. On the area here is a little bit of indent as well, so I'm just going to drag that. And then there are some smaller ones right here in this area. So that is really what I'm going to do now, just work on those little indents. For the back side, the indent is roughly here in the middle. It's really circular at the top and just goes down into a little drop shape when it goes downwards and it just blends in and just vanishes at the bottom. So something like that. Then there's some rough lines going here. And here at the middle and there's a little bit of a line going here. Well, that is the finished details on the one. It's going to be a little bit easier to see them once I begin painting after it's been in the oven for another 30 minutes. And the ball on top could probably have been a little bit smaller, but in the end it's all about like minor details. So I guess I'll survive even though it could have been a little bit smaller. I don't want to do it one more time. But anyways, that is it for the details. So as you just saw, I just went over the holes with my Dremel. This is completely optional, but I just wanted to just make them a little bit more the way I wanted them to be, but you don't have to do that. Then after that, I just painted with a base coat mixed white, ochre yellow, and brown. And it's a little bit difficult to see, but that is white and that is the mix that I made. So it's far away from white, but it is a light wand anyways. What I'm going to do now is just, I'm going to mix brown and black and I have a really light mix and I'm going to mix in a lot of water as well. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a combination of dry brushing and a light wash over the wand. The reason for this is just going to shade up the wand. As you see, this is a little bit too strong still, so I'm just going to mix in more water and just make sure that it isn't too harsh. Okay, so that is better. So what I do, I'm just starting with the holes and I might move down to a smaller brush. I'm just gonna take my paper here and just dry it afterwards. And you can really just slap it on as well if you want to. And you just want to build this up and put more and more into the holes and just darken up the color in this area and on the bend and a little bit on the transition area here. And then eventually I'm going to work on shading the top of the one as well, this area back here. So I've been washing it down with the brown black mix and now I'm just using a little bit harder concentration of that and I'm just blobbing that into the holes here and that is really it for the paint job. There's a little bit darker here at the shadows here and then in the bumps and crevices all the way around the one. So I'm just going to finish this paint job with some more of this black and it's better to go over a couple of times and just build up the color than just blobbing on a solid black color. So that is the 
finished project for today. I hope you guys liked it. Me and Max just want to say a huge thank you to all of our old and new subscribers. We are really appreciative of all the support and love that we are getting from you guys. Right, Max? <laughs> so that is everything for today. We hope you guys enjoyed and thank you so much for watching.